So I work with um, Rob and a couple other consultants as well at the Christie doing head and neck oncology. I also work um, with patients with liver, pancreatic and gallbladder cancer. Um, but predominantly head and neck oncology is my, I guess, my specialist at the moment. And um, so I also work uh, in Greater Manchester as a, as a cancer lead. So I work for Greater Manchester Cancer Alliance. I'm not sure if anyone is familiar with those. It's basically the organisation that works on the regional level to help ensure care for people all across Greater Manchester with cancer is delivered, both in terms of you know, diagnostics, treatment, personalisation of care, the quality and holistic care. And my role with them is, is for personalised care, so more about the aftercare that people receive in addition to their treatment. Um, and I think we have one more click as well. So as well as that, I just thought I'd show you a bit more about myself. I love the lakes. I'm an Arsenal fan, and I've no idea what the score currently is. Um, and I have two lovely guinea pigs who are on all my slides wherever I go. So, sorry, Piggles is the ginger white one, and Nika is the black one. It's nil-nil. It's nil-nil, okay. Don't tell me if we go down or I'll run out of enough, but um, thanks. Yes, so that's me. Anyway, uh, can we have another click? So, what is River Serenib? Lovely, nice name, isn't it? So River Serenib is a drug, okay, as you might be shocked to hear. It's a new drug made by an organisation called Elevar Therapeutics. They're quite a newish company. They haven't got many drugs on the market. This is one of the first few coming off their pipeline, and it's being used, as, as we'll talk about uh, at the moment, or being trialled for adenoid cystic carcinoma, ACC. So it's a tablet, okay? It's not a smarty, it's actually a tablet. But yeah, this is not an infusion, this is a new, an oral tablet treatment that we're hoping is gonna be successful for people like ACC, like I'm sure some people in the room. So this is a very detailed diagram, and I'm gonna try and explain in a very, uh, kind of, maybe a more basic way, but some people may be able to tolerate it in a much more scientific way. So the way it works is on something called VEGFR2, or VEGFR2, if we call it. So the theory being is that adenoid cystic carcinoma, like a lot of tumours, is reliant on uh, blood vessel growth to help it stay alive as such. And that's the same with any tumour that grows over a certain level. But the science tells us so far that we think that these tumours are more reliant on blood vessel growth than maybe other counterparts. So what the theory with this drug is trying to block that pathway of blood vessel growth. So VEGF, or VEGFR2, is a part of the cell that responds and it helps generate blood vessel growth. So there's another drug that people may be aware of called lenvatinib, which is used sometimes in adenoid cystic carcinoma, which works in a similar way on VEGF as well as other receptors. Riviserinib specifically works on VEGF, but if we just go next slide, please but particularly VEGF receptor 2, or VEGFR2. And the theory is by inhibiting this receptor, we stop that growth of blood vessels and the tumour therefore dies from the inside. Okay, that's how by blocking blood vessel, and this is a, not a new trick in cancer medicine, but this is certainly something new for this area. So the theory being is by targeting VEGF receptor 2 rather than all of the VEGF receptors, as you can see, is that also the toxicity and the side effects would be improved. So that's the rationale behind it, and that's all I'll go into about that one. So next slide, please. So I say the company have been using this drug in a few different areas. So as well as adenoid cystic carcinoma, it's also being used in, in hepatocellular, which is liver cancer, as well as colon cancer and stomach <coughs> cancer. And it's being used in various phases in different trials. It's, the, what we're going to talk about today is the phase two trial for adenoid cystic carcinoma. So again, this type of the use of, of attacking blood vessel growth is used in various cancers. Next slide, please. So why, why is this important? So uh, this is important because, as I'm sure a lot of people know, treatments are quite limited, or very limited, for adenoid cystic carcinoma. So any new treatments that can be used and have any benefit is going to be a huge, you know, important thing in the field. Uh, next slide, please. And this is the chap we're going to be talking about. So this chap is called Hyun Seok Kang who is an eminent professor in San Francisco. He goes by Hugh, I'm told. I've not met him myself. I know <laughs> Rob is uh, on personal terms. But, so he's been leading this trial, and this is a phase two trial. So next slide, please. So phase two, meaning this isn't the first ever in humans, but this is building on those first trials that we know now it's, we now know it's safe, and building to see how much does it work. Next slide. So it's single arm, which means everyone in the study is getting this river serenib drug. Okay? An open label means that everyone knows what they're getting. You may have heard about blinded trials or control trials. This isn't blind. Everyone knows what they're getting. The researchers know what they're getting. Okay? It started in about 2019, 2020, uh, well, 2019, and it's closed recruitment in 2022, and that's what we're going to be presenting. Well, so we're going to be sharing some of the data that was presented last year at one of the international conferences, and it included 80 people. 
So that's as many. So these trials often have less people in them, but as, the next, as new trials go on, more people will be recruited. And I guess an important factor about this one is lenvatinib, which I mentioned earlier, which is used for, again, people with adenoid cystic carcinoma. People who've had that were included in this trial. So it wasn't people who haven't had any treatment before. This is people who could have had lenvatinib and see how they tolerated this following that. So this could be a further treatment for people who've already had that. So I'm going to take you through a bit of the data now. OK, so if you click by click. You do, Emma's doing excellently at predicting my clicks. So. so one of the ways we look at how effective these treatments are is by response rate. OK, so that's how many people have shrinkage in the tumour or in, in, a, in a cancer burden following having the drug. Now, without trying to go into too detail, there's, there's two different ways we look at this. There's something called resist and there's something called choi. And they're two different criteria. Resist is a bit stricter. Resist is a bit of a stricter criteria. So to get a resist response, the tumour has to be, or overall tumour burden, has to reduce by 20%. For Choi's criteria, who was another um, scientist in the area, or a clinician, they only have to reduce by 10%. So it's a bit more lenient in terms of how much shrinkage. It's also not done just by volume, so the intensity, we measure these on CTs and MRI scans. Now, it can also be that the intensity of, of the glow on the scan, something called, the, uh, can also be reduced as well. So not just the size, but sometimes that intensity on the scan. So that's why we see a difference in the CHOI and in the RESIST criteria. RESIST is, to be honest, what we use mostly and what most people in this country will be familiar with using in our trials. But I guess what they often see with CHOI's criteria is it actually is more closely linked to benefits in terms of quality of life. So even though they may not have got a 20% response that is classified as RESIST, if they've got a 15% response, people often have also significant symptom benefit with that as well as quality of life. So that's why that's important. So what we're seeing here is that by resist criteria, we're seeing about a 14% response. So that's people who've had a reduction of 20% or more. Okay? Compared to lenvatinib, which again is one of the other drugs that is sometimes used for this type of cancer, it's about the same. So again, 10 to 15%. So it's not significantly more or significantly less. It's about the same ballpark. But the choice criteria, like I said, about half of people are getting a response, again, by more than 10% according to that, which means those people are often getting a symptomatic benefit. So they may not have the shrinkage included by resist, but they're getting symptom benefit, and I'm sure a lot of people would understand that is often can be what's really important, as well as just arbitrary numbers. Disease control rate, so that is including people who've had a response, but also people who haven't had progression. So people who've either had a response from their tumour or it's had stable disease, it's stayed the same. So, and that's really important because, again, we know that ACC can be, unfortunately, a slowly progressive disease. So actually controlling it and it not spreading any further and not growing is actually really important. So about 60% of people using whichever criteria would be used had some form of disease control, so some form of benefit, which does mean that 40%, so four out of 10 people, wouldn't have that control and would have had progression. Next slide. So the other question is then, how long does that response last? Okay, so looking at the average, so median is one of the averages we use. The average duration of that response for people who did respond, again, the two criteria is slightly different, is around a year. Okay, so after, that's how long people have maintained that response for, and then they may have needed either further treatment, or that's when the cancer started to grow again. So that's useful in telling us that this doesn't just make people respond or, or help you respond for a few months. That's a year worth of response, and for some people that can be really significant symptom relief as well. Toxicities is, the, I guess, the fancy word we use for side effects. So we know that all of the drugs we use have some form of side effects. Rivaserinib, which is a, a get drug like lenvatinib, tends to cause problems like tiredness. It can cause problems with sore mouth as well, which are the most common ones. It can also affect your blood pressure. So grade three toxicities are ones when it's normally a, kind of more serious than not. So grade one and grade two are often on the mild side. Grade three is when toxicities and side effects get more serious. We might need to pause treatment. We might need to reduce the dose. Doesn't mean we always have to stop. But as you can see, there's a significant amount of people that did get some toxicity with this drug. Uh, we have to bear in mind there was only 80 people in the study. So it's a small study. So I would expect that with a larger cohort, we may well see a reduced number. But again, something to bear in mind that that is a, that is a significant thing we need to factor in. And last one. Again, we have to think about this as well. With any treatment we use, 5% of people, so uh, four out of the 80 uh, people in the study did die from this, uh, well, did die during the study, not necessarily due to the drug itself, but there is that factor we have to bear in mind as well. So we've got some 
you know, really interesting data on the top and really helpful about showing how uh, useful it is. But we do have to bear in mind that all of these things come with some side effects. But, you know, again, in a treatment or in a disease like this where treatments are very few and far between, this is really, really good stuff to see. So why is this important? What's on the horizon next? And one more click, please, Emma, will tell us what. So we said that was a phase two trial. This, well, now, what now is coming is a phase three trial. So we work quite simply in medicine, phase two, phase two, phase three. What this means normally in a phase three trial is then we'll be putting a, the drug that we know then has some benefit up against something else. So that's when the words like blinding and control trials come into it. So it will normally be up against something, either a comparator or a placebo. Okay. Now, again, not being able to talk too much about this due to competitive disclosures and commercial agreements, but again, this is something that's very much in the pipeline and we, you know, we very much look forward to kind of in the coming year or so, really.